Hello guys and welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to talk about making your own DIY track saw. Okay, welcome back. So for those of you that may not be aware of what a track saw is, I'm going to put some images up on the screen right now to show you what track saws are. First off, let me say, there's a lot of great track saws out there, and if you have the money and you want to spend it, go right ahead. They're great to have. The only problem is for some of the rest of us that either don't have the money or don't want to spend the money because we're just DIYers. We don't use them all the time, so we don't want to spend on super expensive tools to be used very seldomly. Uh, track saws can be, again, very expensive. So why do you want to spend so much on a specialty tool when you can make your own? Now this is not the track saw. Don't get ahead, don't get ahead of me here. This is not the track saw. This is a mock-up. For people that may not be aware of what a, uh, a track saw is, I mock this up just to explain it to you. Um, there are various different videos on YouTube that explain how to make a track saw out of wood. And that's where I got the idea. But don't stop there. Don't give up. I made it better than theirs, and I'll explain why in a minute. But let me explain how a track saw works. A track saw is very simple. What you do is you have an edge board like this one here, and then you have a bottom board like this one here, and then what happens is you have, let's use these black blocks here as the saw. What you do is you have your saw, and it rides across the track like that, and it gives you a nice clean cut because this edge will keep the saw always on the line that you want it to be. So it just rides across and it gives you a very clean cut. Okay, that's simple explanation to the point we got that out of the way. Now, this is only a mock-up like I said. Let's put this away. So, there's a lot of good track saws out there like I said. If you have the money, go ahead and spend on them. They're worth it. If you don't have the money, there's a lot of people that explain how to make track saws out of wood. Now that's perfectly fine. The only problem is it has some drawbacks to it. The drawback being that wood has a tendency to bend and warp. So that can throw off your cut along the way as the wood ages. So you're going to have to make them every so often when the wood warps and changes over the humidity and the coldness and the changes of the season, especially depending on where you are. Some places like the west coast of the U.S., Temperatures are fairly stable. Now you go to the Midwest or the East Coast, changes are more extreme. So as you get the extremely hot, humid summers and the cold winters, that wood is going to shrink and expand and shrink and expand. It's going to warp. So that's why I really don't like the wood track saws because they, they have a tendency to throw off your cut. Also, they can be big and bulky and heavy and take up a lot of room. Uh, generally speaking, you have to use a minimum of half-inch plywood preferably three-quarter inch plywood. So that gets big, heavy, and expensive. Plywood is not as cheap as it used to be. So that's going to get rather heavy and expensive and cumbersome. So you're going to have to either make uh, a big eight-foot section or two four-foot sections and put them together as you need them. But the two four-foot sections, how do you put them together? You can't interfere with the rolling of the saw. So that's where a lot of complications and problems come in with the wooden track saw. So if you got plenty of room and you don't mind having a big old block of wood hanging around that you're only going to use maybe once or twice a year, go right ahead. But I'm going to give you a better idea. Okay? And this may not work for everybody, but don't give up. Don't stop the video. Don't give up just yet. Same as I got an idea from somebody else and I turned it into my own special idea. Wait till the end of the video. Take all the hints I'm going to give you. And if my system doesn't work for you, Try to take some of what works and use it in your own system and see if that helps you out, okay? But before I go show you what to do, let me give you another tip. Call this Free Tip Tuesday on Wednesday, all right? If you're going to be using a track saw and you want to have some dust collection, I've seen people that try to fumble around with this. They create a dust collection system. They use their shop back and they hook it up to the saw. Some saws have a dust collection system built in or a port where you can hook up your vacuum and suck out the dust, great, that's fantastic. But people complain that it's too much trouble 
having to plug in the saw, plug in the shop back, turn it on, turn the other one, you forget, you fumble, it, it doesn't work. Here's a free little tip for you. Get yourself one of these. Now, you may not have this in your area. I got this at the 99 cent store. Well, not really 99 cents, 99 and above. But in your area, see if you have uh, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, 99 cents, pick and save, big lots, whatever you have. I mean, this was only $3.99. You can see it right there. And uh, this is, very simply, a foot pedal. You can plug in up to three items on here. It's just an extension cord with a switch built in and a foot pedal. You plug in your shop back, your saw, everything you're going to use. You put this down, and then when you're ready to start, stomp on that, and you're good to go. Want it to stop? Stomp on it, and you're done. So a foot switch like this is very convenient, and it lights up to tell you when it's ready and when it's not. Here, I'll show you. See how it lights up? And when it's done, it's off. When it's on, it's on. When it's off, it's off. Very easy peasy, neat little system. You can stomp on that with your foot, no problem. It's cheap, and even at Harbor Freight, the cheapest foot pedal they have is $20. For four bucks, hey, you might even get it cheaper than this. So keep that in mind. Hunt around for this, even if you don't need it right now. Hunt around, get it cheap somewhere, and store it away until the day you need it. Because that's what I did. I find it very convenient to have one of these. So that's your little free tip Tuesday on a Wednesday here. Let's move on to the track saw. Okay, guys, before I pull it out, let me just show you where my, my uh, track saw lives. Can you see it? It's in there. In case you can't see it, yeah, you've seen this before. It lives right behind my compressor, but you probably never noticed what it was. And it's right there. And see, it just stores my shop back uh, hoses when I'm not using it. And it just sits peacefully, quietly against the wall. And I uh, used that little thing there to hold it in place. And I'm going to pull it out. You're going to see it in more detail. You're seeing the back of it. Okay, wait till I pull out the front. And I'm going to show you exactly what I did. Okay, this may look a little odd. So let me explain what you're looking at here. So you understand as we go along what I've done. And uh, what ideas you can take from this. This is my track saw. It's two parts to it. This is the front of the part. This is the back of it. So you see what we're dealing with here. Now... I said I didn't like wood, and I stand behind that. The, re the thing, what happened was, the way I evolved this idea was, a long time ago, I, pressed, I purchased an edge guide for the saw from Sears, and you can see it right here. This is the edge guard that I bought from Sears, and this is supposed to guide your saw along. The only problem is, you have to measure out where the blade is going to be each and every time, and that can lead to discrepancies and faulty cuts. Even if you're one millimeter off, that will throw off your cut all the way along. Because you have to measure at the start and at the end where your blade is going to wind up. That was always a real problem, a real pain. Because like I said, one millimeter here, one millimeter there, you could be way off or have an angled cut. It won't be straight. It won't be exactly what you want. So I never really liked using this saw guide from Sears. I bought this maybe like 30 years ago, and it sat collecting dust for a long time. Then when I saw the idea of the uh, track saw, I said to myself, well, I could make a wooden one, but I already explained the problems with that, and I would have thrown the money away on this if I don't figure out some way to use this, and I prefer metal much better. This is aluminum, so it's not prone to rusting or warping or twisting or falling apart or having any problem. The good thing about this is that there's two sections to it. Here you can see the other section. And here you can see this is what mine is. Sears the cutter's edge. Now I don't think they make this anymore. So you may not be able to get this. If you still have it, I mean if you have it, if you already bought one, you could take advantage of this idea. And this comes with clamps that go on the bottom of it. It has a track system on the bottom and you put the clamps in you put the clamp in, and then, there's a little nut here, but this one doesn't go here. This one goes here, I think. Or the nut's too tight. One or the other. There we go. Anyway, you slide this in wherever you want it. It slides all the way across, but I left it, I had to close it off to be able to put the piece of wood here. So then you tighten this to the bottom of the table, and that holds it perfectly right there. 
so you have plenty of room for the saw to ride over this area because the motor hangs out over here above this part the blade is over here the motor is over here the body right in here so it goes over this whole part and I'll show you in a minute how that works but this gives you the stability and the rigidity of metal to guide the saw and the wood here is only pointing out where the blade is going to be so that's all this is is a marker that's why I use a very thin piece of wood and that's what I recommend a very thin piece of wood this is only a couple of millimeters maybe uh, a couple of sixteenths of an inch not even a sixteenth maybe I, I, I don't I'd have to measure it but I forget you can get this at any lumber store and they generally either call these uh, door skins or just paneling and it's very very thin as you can see and you just cut it to here now the way to do this is if you have a piece of metal whether you have this one that I am showing you here or whether you get one from Harbor Freight let's say and you adapt it to there or whether you just have a straight piece of aluminum that you trust that is actually straight and true all you have to do is add the piece of wood to it and then what you do is leave the wood out leave it wild doesn't matter if it's all messed up or whatever leave the wood out hanging wild and then what you do is you set up your saw you go through and you cut the edge where the blade will cut that way this will be an exact representation of where the blade will end up so you never have to do any measuring so let's say and, and the good thing about this like I said is that these two pieces come together so I can either use a four foot section or an eight foot section this piece right here slides out and will join these two together so it works very very well so let me give you an example let's say you wanted to cut this door let's say it's too big and you wanted to cut the door and you wanted to make a perfect cut well let me get a pencil I'll be right back and in case I didn't make this very clear let me show on this part here what I did was like I said this metal part was the original item that I purchased from Sears just this part here the wood was added on so I needed to have flush clearance up here so the saw motor can travel up here as you'll see and I needed to have flush down below because you don't want to damage the surface that you're working on so what I did was here you can see I installed some bolts right there or screws and I put three one in the middle one at that end and one at this end over here and they're flush they're completely flush they won't damage anything and they're flush up here they just pop out a tiny bit which is below this ridge there's actually a ridge right here which is what this item rides in so as long as it was below this item so I can slide that back and forth as long as it was below this one I'm fine so that's why I put one here in the middle and the other two are off to the side here to give me a flat leap stability I didn't want it pulling off one way or the other so that way it's totally stable on here so I took the metal that I already owned the piece of wood and screwed it together and that's how I came to make my own track saw okay here we go so get your pencil and your tape measure and let's say you wanted to mark this and you want to make it exactly one inch so you take your tape measure you measure well close to the edge one inch right here then go to the other side measure one inch over here and that's it you don't even need to make a line you don't need to do any other measurement except the measurement you want to do simple easy peasy then all you do is you take this you move it up, move it up to the line you put the edge of it right on the line because that is where the blade is going to end up you put it right on the line you put this side right on the line right on the edge if you can't see it I'm gonna move it right now hold on okay so you can see right there you put the piece of wood right on the mark and over here you put the piece of wood right on the mark you don't need to go fumbling around making all sorts of crazy measurements or anything like that and then your track saw is ready to go that's why I marked the edges darker I painted them black so it makes it easier to see but sometimes if you're cutting something smaller it won't uh, you know that won't be necessary I mean you could paint the whole thing black if you really wanted to 
but I don't think it's that necessary. But if you're cutting this door, which I just you know mocked up for you, and you want to have a perfect cut, this will do the job for you. And uh, I'm not going to cut it because I really don't need to cut this right now, but um, I'll, I'll pull out a saw and I'll show you how easily it goes through there. So let me get the saw and I'll show you. Okay, so here I'm giving you a quick flyby showing you exactly how this works with the track saw and the saw in place. So you can see there the edge of the uh, blade guard or the foot, shoe, platform, whatever it's called, you can see that rests right up against the metal edge. So that guides you all the way along to the end, wherever it is that you want to mark it. So you put it right on the edge, and that's exactly where the blade will fall. Because, like I said before, you can see on here, I used the saw to actually cut the platform, and that showed me exactly where the blade will fall. So all you do is put the saw in place, set it up right to the edge, plug it in, and away you go. You just cut it with the saw, and you get a perfect cut all the way every single time. And uh, I found it to be quite good. I've actually, I've actually done some detail work. For example, I'll show you right here. That dresser that you see right there, I found that, and I use it for tool storage. That did not come with the top drawer. And you know, drawers are kind of difficult to make, very detailed. And I made this top drawer out of uh, leftover scrap wood. And I'll show you right here. You see, it works perfectly. That drawer, I made it myself using the, the track saw. So I got perfect cuts every time. And it is precise, and it rolls, it works perfectly. Perfect. It looks, I mean, I couldn't, I didn't have any wood that matched it, because it is a laminate. So I didn't have a laminate that was the same color, but the drawer itself rolls and works perfectly fine. I'll show you again. All the way out, perfect dimension, all the way back, no trouble at all. So that shows you right there, the track saw works very, very well. And this cost me a nominal amount because I already had the metal edge and I already had the wood. You can see it's scrap wood. This is from some paneling that I cut. You can see that one there. That's a light socket that I goofed up, so I had to recut it. So this is extra wood I had left over. So it didn't cost me anything, if anything, peanuts. Use a very thin wood, and you can see right there, it just cuts along perfectly. You can see it where the edging is, and you can see where the blade is. And that tells you exactly how it's going to work. And you can see the side profile there. The, uh, the clamps slide right in at the bottom. And the clamps actually, they go right here. And they slide right in there. You can slide them back and forth. And I adjust it to wherever I need it to be. And it holds it in place. So nothing interferes up here. Because as you can see right there, the motor slides, hangs over. So if this were to be up here clamping it down, it would interfere with the motor running along there. So that would not work. Okay, so there you have it then. Your very true, very accurate, very inexpensive DIY track saw that you can make yourself and give you an accurate cut every single time. And you have absolutely nothing to worry about. No expense. And you can use your own saw. You don't need to buy a special saw. You don't need to buy a special track. You don't need to buy a special anything. This is stuff that you may already have lying around. And if you don't have this system, don't worry. If you have a uh, good piece of metal, whether it's aluminum or steel or whatever, you can make your own. And you can fabricate it to match what I just showed you right now. So I hope this video helped you guys out. You know, hit that uh, like button, hit that subscribe button, and stay in touch. I will be sure to come up with new and better things to show you on the next videos. Hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.